you've got to think, right, what does it mean to be a leader in a world that is so digital and in a world where the tools have changed? Um, and I guess, you know, for me, I was thinking about this and thinking about, well, you know, all the leaders that I know and, and the great leaders that I know, what's the sort of impact they have on the culture and the people around them? Um, and I was pulled back to a quote, a very famous quote from a guy called Larry Sen, who was doing lots of work on organizational change and leadership in the 1970s. And uh, his famous quote, and you'll have seen it, I'm sure, is um, he said, actually, what happens is organizations become shadows of their leaders. And that's not about um, leaders forcing their style upon an organization or, you know, being very aggressive about the way things have to be, although you get that occasionally. Um, but it's much more this idea that actually in any organization, people look up to other people who are in leadership positions and take their cues from them about how to behave and what's important and what do I do to get on here and um, how do we go about our business. Um, and for all of us having this conversation right now, um, that I think is one of the really, really important things to hold on to, right? As leaders in a digital age, the organizations that we work in become uh, shadows of us. And the way that we choose to behave will have a tremendous impact upon the people around us. So I just wanted to pull out a couple of things. Um, the management consultant in me wanted to pull out a list of three, but in the end, I think it's actually a list of two. So, um, you know, if I were to think about what does it really mean in terms of leadership in the world that we find ourselves in, um, then for me, there's a couple of things in here. So I'm going to talk about, uh, number one, the importance of committing to this agenda, and I mean really committing. And then the second, which I think is, um, you know, transcends digital, which is um, be the best person that you can be. Even if I'm not a computer scientist or a data scientist and I can't code to save my life, um, I've got to commit to this agenda. Right? It's not enough anymore for a chief executive to say, you know what, I've got a web team and an IT team and some digital guys over there, and so I don't need to think about it. I don't need to engage. Actually, um, if it is as important as we all think it is, then it's incumbent upon people in leadership positions to commit to this and to actually make an effort to understand and to participate and to set an amazing example. Um, you know, this idea that um, I don't need to understand digital because someone can do it for me cannot, in my view, be right. I don't think that means that everyone in a leadership position needs to go and do their PhD in something frightfully complicated, but I do think you need to know enough to ask good questions and interrogate the answers that come back to you. Um, you know, you wouldn't think that it was okay for a chief executive to say, well, you know what, I can't read... Um, the accounts of my organization, or I'm not really sure what this bit in the annual report means, or, you know, media training, that's for someone else, right? You'd expect that to be in the portfolio of things that a leader in a modern organization can do. Um, and my view is that digital is no different. What I think is really exciting is that actually the barriers to entry in terms of picking up and get immersed in these skills are lower than they've ever been before. So, you know what, you can pick up um, a Raspberry Pi for 20 quid, and uh, go on um, an online learning platform and learn a bit of coding. Um, and actually that costs you very little. It certainly costs you, you know, next to nothing in terms of money, a bit of time commitment, but it's possible to pick these things up. It's possible to understand um, the outlines of how things work, even if you don't understand the detail. Um, and once you know what's possible, you're in a much, much stronger position, both to advocate for it within the organization um, and to work with and lead the people around you who are steeped in the, uh, in the detail. And, you know, for those of us who aren't quite, uh, you know, sitting right in the top chair yet, then I guess there's something interesting in there about, you know, what's our duty to uh, the leader that we work with, right? So is it enough um, if people push responsibility down to us? Do we say, yes, I'll take that on and I will execute it? Or do you think actually as someone who has great digital skills in your organization, you've got a duty to uh, educate and enhance the skills of the people that you work for, as well as the people who work for you. Um, when, I was at, uh, when I was at McKinsey, we had a good phrase for this. We called it the obligation to dissent, right? This idea that 
um, everybody, no matter their place in the hierarchy, if you've got a sense about how it could be done better, how things could be improved, how we could make more of a difference, then it's your responsibility to speak up and help that change to happen. So that's the first thing I'd say, you know, this real critical importance of committing to this agenda, whether you think you are a leader or a digital leader, doesn't really matter, right? We're leaders, the world is digital, that's not going away. Right, so the second thing that I wanted to pull out um, was this idea that actually, um, you know, like in you know, this conversation, whether it was digital or not, about leadership, I think a big part of that would be about, um, well, being a good person, right? Being the best person that you can be. And I think digital is really exciting here for, um, for people in leadership positions because it gives you all of these extra tools to be that person that you want to be. Um, you know, there's stuff in there which you will have been talking about a lot this morning around um, this amazing ability that we've now got to listen to our users, right? In a way that we never could before. We can connect with the people who are consuming our services. We can understand the sorts of things that they're going through. Um, uh, we can uh, use the tools at our disposal to do a fantastic job for them, right? So actually, um, all this stuff that you hear sometimes about surprise and delight, um, you know, do a great job for your clients, for your customers. Um, you can pull that off using tools in a way that wasn't possible before. I think uh, the second thing in here is about what it can do for the people that work with you and for you. So, um, again, with all of the tools that are available to us, there's a fantastic opportunity um, to empower your staff and your volunteers and the people around you. Um, you know, this. And I think you know, one of the things that I've noticed and the job I do at the moment is, of course, um, you know, we recruit bright new people all of the time. They've got these amazing ideas about the sorts of tools that they want to use, the platforms they would exploit to get the job done in ways that we couldn't have imagined. Um, you know, and I see it as, as the responsibility on me and others in leadership positions to say, actually, we're going to enable you to make the best of those, right? And actually, we're not going to do things just the way I learned when I was starting out because the world has moved on. Um, but I can unlock that because so often um, in organizations, the pace of change can be kind of glacial. So unlocking that, empowering people, um, and I think also celebrating success in a way which um, can be magnified now, right? So once upon a time, your team would do a good job, and of course, you'd congratulate them, and you'd make a big thing of it. Nowadays, you can do that on social media, and the entire world can see and can participate in the success. Um, and you know the impact that you can have if you do that well on motivation and morale and everything else is is really phenomenal. And you know I guess the last thing in here for me is about actually you know there's a flip side of all of this which is um, in these sorts of situations in a leadership situation armed with digital armed with platforms armed with data. Um, there is you know an enormous temptation sometimes to not do the right thing. Okay, so, you know, you're all very familiar with the Google motto about uh, don't be evil. Um, you know, I have lost count of the number of situations that I've been in where someone has said to me, you know, we're gathering all of this data, how can we hoover it all up and monetize this? Or um, how can I make sure that I exploit this platform in order to do the very best for my organization? Um, and it would be easy to go down that road a lot of the time. But it must be incumbent upon us in leadership positions to say, actually, no, there's a better way, there's a more ethical way, there's a way that's more inclusive. Um, and I think if we can hold on to that, at the same time as setting a great example to the people around us um, and really committing to this idea that um, digital matters fundamentally, then we stand a pretty good chance of reshaping, well, everything, right? Government, civil society, corporations, uh, it's all up for grabs.